Are you wanting to learn more about neighborhoods in Boston? Well, let's dive in and take a look. The city of Boston has designated 23 neighborhoods in the city. And one of the best things that you're going to find about Boston is that all the neighborhoods have very distinct personalities and that there's literally a neighborhood for anyone and everyone in the city of Boston. But to make things even more confusing, unofficially, Boston has many overlapping neighborhoods within, well, larger neighborhoods. Take South Boston, for example, or otherwise known as Southie. Boston recognizes the neighborhood of South Boston. However, to residents, it's broken up to very, two very distinct parts. Well, there's actually three technically with the Seaport District, but most residents don't even realize that that's actually part of Southie. But anyway, confusing, yes. But back to the Southie that most people recognize. There's the east side and then there's the west side. But within the two sides, there's the neighborhood within the neighborhood. Take Andrew Square or City Point, for example. Both are in Southie, Andrew Square, that's on the west side, and City Point's on the east side. So both are neighborhoods in Southie, east and west side. Both are in two very distinct areas, but both have two very distinct personalities. So where do we start when we talk about in Boston. Let's start with those designated 23 neighborhoods in the city and take a look in the description below for additional videos that go in depth to each neighborhood. So let's start scratching that surface, if you will. The official neighborhoods of Boston are Austin, Back Bay, Bay Village, Beacon Hill, Brighton, Charlestown, Chinatown, Dorchester, Downtown, East Boston, Fenway, Kenmore area, Hyde Park, Jamaica Plain, Mattapan, Mission Hill, North End, Rosadale, Roxbury, South Boston, South End, West End, and West Roxbury. Boy, say that five times fast. Now, keep in mind that Boston today looks a lot different than it did a couple hundred years ago. And knowing this, well, it might make a little bit more sense when you see all the roads crisscrossing chaos when you're looking at a Boston map. Much of what we actually know as Boston today was actually a bay that would be later filled in. So geographically speaking, when we say North End or South End, they used to actually refer to their position on the Shawmut Peninsula and quite frankly, really make absolutely zero sense today. But Going back to today, Boston is Massachusetts' largest city with a population just under 700,000. Greater Boston has an estimated population of about 4.8 million people. And as I mentioned, I am going to do more in-depth videos of Boston neighborhoods, and they're going to be in the description section below. But for now, let's start scratching that surface. When people think of Boston, they might not know it, but they're actually most likely picturing Beacon Hill. So I figured, heck, let's start there. Beacon Hill is home to the State House with a population a little under 10,000 people. It's definitely not one of our Boston's largest neighborhoods, but it's one of the most premier. Beacon Hill is known for its upscale homes and antique shops on Charles Street. Beacon Hill is also one of Boston's oldest communities and therefore adorns a ton of attention with its cobblestone streets, brick sidewalks, and gas streetlights. It's a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. Public transportation is easily accessible, being that you can reach three major T lines within minutes, the blue and green line and red line. Year to date, the average condo and single family home price in the, on the hill is $2 million with a median price of 1.1 million. The Back Bay is another iconic area that people picture when they think of Boston. A fun fact is the Back Bay used to be, well, just that, a bay. That's until it was filled in. Today, it's a stately neighborhood that is lined with elegant Boston brownstones and luxury apartments. The Back Bay is also home to some of the city's best window shopping with Newberry Street as well as the Pro. It's also home to some of Boston's best green spaces as well. Here you can find America's first botanical garden or stroll the three mile long Charles River Esplanade which is one of my favorites, um, is walking the tree line park that runs down Commonwealth Avenue. You're in a park, it's city all around you, it's kind of cool. Um, transportation includes four stops all along the green line, um, one on the orange line, and a commuter rail stop at the Back Bay Station. The Back Bay, Bay is also, by the way, just a 15 minute walk to downtown. Year to date, the average condo and single family property in the Back Bay is sold for nearly $2.2 million, with a median price being $1.3 million. South Boston, or Southie, is another iconic area, but because of, quite frankly, different kind of history. It's been made famous as the home of famed gangster Whitey Bulger, as well as huge Hollywood movies like The Departed. Heck, even Matt Damon's condo in Goodwill Hunting was in Southie, and that just recently sold a couple of years ago. However, it did not look 
all anything like it did in the movie, that's for sure. And quite frankly, that's Southie. Today, Southie is considered the place to live if you're a millennial. Southie has transformed over the years with yuppies having fully taken over. Today, you can still find a strong sense of community in Southie, though. And technically, the Seaport District is part of Southie, where many have tried but failed to get the name South Boston Waterfront to stick. Southie, it's an ideal location bordering downtown, being within close proximity to the airport, and you'll even find some of Boston's best restaurants and bars. Heck, Southie even has Boston's best beach. Yes, we have beaches, by the way. While technically the seaport is part of South Boston, I figured it's best to break out the numbers. So the year-to-date average condo sale for a single family and condo in South Boston is $844,000 with a median price of $783. The seaport district has a price of $2 million dollars with a median price of 1.6 million. So from South Boston, let's head to East Boston, or as some call it Eastie. Not many, but some too. East Boston is, some, is home to more than 45,000 residents and is bordered by the towns of Winthrop and Revere. Today, the footprint is a lot different than it was um, in the, before the 1940s, where there was a big project that connected five inner islands using landfill. So that's Eastie today. East Boston is eth ethnically diverse, which has really been the story of East Boston's history. Today, nearly Nearly 55% of the population is Hispanic. However, with the recent explosion of development, East Boston has become home to the area of some of the college students as well as recent graduates have really discovered. Residents of East Boston enjoy the Bell Island Marsh Reservation, the six community gardens, Constitution Beach, and Piers Park, which is a six and a half acre park that overlooks Boston Harbor. It's an awesome park. People who live in East Boston are served by multiple stops on the Blue Line, as well as water taxis and the ferry. The year to date condo and single family home price in East Boston has averaged about $708,000, with a median price of $643,000. Charlestown is located across the bridge from the city center. You may remember the bridge in the movie The Town with Ben Affleck, and for the record, Charlestown today is nothing like that. Charlestown is known for the USS Constitution, which is America's oldest, largest, or oldest warship, and the Bugger Hill Monument. Residents will immediate, immediately comment on how the streets are so much less crowded than other areas of Boston, which, by the way, is a huge perk to those residents. Homes in Charlestown consist of older single-family and multi-family properties that have been condo converted. You also see some newer buildings, specifically in the Navy Yard, which is a neighborhood, well, in the neighborhood of Charlestown. Things to do in Charlestown is going to enjoy the Bunker Hill Monument, Winthrop Square, and the Charles, Charlestown Civil War Memorial. Many can also be found walking the Harbor Walk in the Navy Yard, which also overlooks um, the harbor. Charlestown is serviced by the Orange Line at the Sullivan Square and Community College Stops. It also has easy access to I-93. Year to date, condo and single family home prices in Charleston have averaged about $908,000 with a median price of $822,000. Austin is a little bit different on the other side of town. So let's head over there where the Austin and Brighton neighborhoods are often lumped together, but technically that's not correct. They may share police and fire, but to the city of Boston, they are two very distinct neighborhoods. Austin's home to about 30,000 people of all different makeups. However, it is known for its large population of college students and recent graduates. Austin is bordered by Fenway and Brighton, as well as Brookline. The Charles River borders Austin in the north, as well as the east. Housing in Austin consists of a lot of large brick apartment buildings, with the areas closer to Brighton being more multifamily properties with the occasional single family mix. In. Residents enjoy the convenience of the B line of the Green Line, which is multiple stops throughout and takes you into the city center. Year to date, the average condo and single family sales price in the town of Austin is $517,000, with the median property price being $515,000. Now, Brighton is a town of about 43,000 people, and it is known for its younger residents. However, Brighton doesn't have nearly as many as Austin. But Brighton isn't just a college neighborhood. Yes, you're going to find college students there, but you'll also find a mix of young professionals and families. Brighton has seen a lot of development over the years with the New Balance World Headquarters and the Boston Landing, which is a 15-acre mixed-use development with office space, retail stores, and a sports facility for the Bruins and Celtics. Brighton serviced by the B and C branch of the Green Line. They also have a new commuter rail stop at the Boston Landing Station. The year-to-date average condo and single-family sales price in Brighton is $559,000, with the median price 
being 497,000. Next, let's head to the most suburban neighborhood in the city of Boston. And that neighborhood's gonna be West Roxbury. Yes, originally West Roxbury was part of Roxbury, but today they are two very different neighborhoods with two very distinct personalities. West Roxbury is home to about 30,000 residents. They hold the title as the safest place to live with a crime rate that is 65% lower than the Boston average. Residents of West Roxbury enjoy great amenities like the Millennium Park, which sits along the Charles River and is six miles of trails. The park contains playgrounds and even a canoe launch. Other popular spots are Billings Field and Brooks Farm, which is a 179 acre National Historic Site. West Roxbury mostly consists of single family homes. If you're looking for a yard and want to be in the city of Boston, eh, probably West Roxbury needs to be on your list. West Roxbury is served by the Needham commuter line with two stops. Year to date, the average condo and single family home in West Roxbury is $702,000 with the median price being $682,000. Roslindale. Like West Roxbury, Roslindale also used to be part of Roxbury. Today, Roslindale offers residents really a good mix though. It's a little livelier than West Roxbury, but less trendy than other spots around the city. Here, you're gonna find a mix of single family homes as well as condos and multifamily properties. Well, it's really depending on the area. For example, the western part of West Ro Roslindale blends with the one and two family properties within the tree-lined streets that we see in West Roxbury, while the northern area tends to be denser with two to three family properties. The square in Roslindale has gone through a revitalization in the last couple of decades and is now a central focus on what draws a lot of folks to this neighborhood. Roslindale is served by the Needham commuter line with three stops. It also has access to the Orange Line at Forest Hills, which is on the Roslindale Jamaica Line border. Um, year to date, the average condo and single family sales price in Roslindale is $640,000, with the median price being $620,000. So now let's jump to Jamaica Plain. Jamaica Plain is the neighborhood that is north of Roslindale. So if you're looking at a map, the Jamaica Plain is a little bit closer to city center. Jamaica Plain has a population of about 38,000 people and is home to four of the Emerald Necklace Parks of Boston. The Emerald Necklace is a pretty cool, so maybe worth a quick Google later. Not now, later. <laughs> Uh, today, JP is known for its art scene as well as its large concentration of artists, families, and young professionals. One of the highest demand neighborhoods in, is Moss Hill, which is a quiet neighborhood with mostly single family homes and yards. Center Street is the neighborhood that maintains, uh, that is JP's main through fair and area of activity. Here you're gonna find independent stores as well as restaurants. Jamaica Plain is considered one of the first streetcar suburbs in all of America. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I had to look it up too. Basically, this community was developed once public transportation made it easy to get in and out of downtown Boston. Today, residents of JP are served by the Needham commuter um, rail line at the Forest Hill stop, as well as four stops along the Orange Line. Year to date, the average condo and single family home sales price in Jamaica Plain is $762,000 with the median price of $717,000. Mattapan. Mattapan is a neighborhood that is home to about 37,000 people. This is a neighborhood that is predominantly residential. Mattapan has it all with a mix of public housing, small apartment buildings, single family homes, as well as multifamily homes. The commercial heart of the neighborhood is predominantly in Mattapan Square. Mattapan is served by the Ashmont Mattapan High Speed Rail, or as some know it as the Mattapan Trolley. It's a partially grayed, separated light rail line where residents can transfer to the red line at the Ashmont Station that will take them right into the Boston Center. There's also two commuter rail stops, the Blue Hill Avenue and Morton Street stops that'll take you into South Station in downtown Boston. Year to date, the average single family home uh, and condo in the neighborhood of Mattapan is $473,000, while the median price is $475,000. Dorchester. Dorchester is Boston's largest neighborhood, and also it's most diverse. Actually, Dorchester is the eighth most diverse zip code in the United States. As Boston's largest neighborhood, there are nearly 126,000 people that call Dorchester home, which is spread over six square miles. Dorchester, Dorchester actually rivals the size and population 
population of the separate city across the Charles, which is Cambridge. I throw in this separate part as many out-of-towners, quite frankly, will lump Cambridge and Boston together, which is a huge no-no to locals. Dorchester is so large that oftentimes it's divided into two sections, north and south. While the city is inclined to split Dorchester and North and South, locals really don't stick to talking about the neighborhoods inside the neighborhoods. Neighborhoods like Savin Hill or the Polish Triangle. There's literally something for everyone in Dorchester, from sprawling Victorian homes in Ashmont Hills to Fields Corner, where postgraduates can find apartments for <laughs> reasonable rent. Dorchester residents are serviced by four stops on the red line, as well as two stops at the, on the Ashmont Mattapan trolley line, which connects the red line at the Ashmont station. There's also three stops on the commuter rail, so lots of access points in Dorchester. Year to date, the average condo and single family sales price in Dorchester is $603,000, with a median price of $590,000. The neighborhood of Roxbury has had a couple of different identity changes throughout its history. First, it was known largely as an Irish community, then a Jewish community, but today the city states that Roxbury is the heart of black culture in Boston. Nubian Square serves as Roxbury's hub for commerce. There has been significant development over the years as there has been a spillover of college students from Mission Hill and the Fenway. These students have ventured in the neighborhood looking for, well, affordable housing with an amazing location, which is what Roxbury has. Now, Roxbury is served by the Roxbury Crossing Station on the Orange Line. There are two additional stops just beyond the neighborhood's boundaries. Um, the commuter rail has two stops in Roxbury as well, while the Silver Line has a stop in Dudley Square. And for the record, when people talk about the Silver Line, it's like Boston likes to lives just to confuse folks. The Silver Line is really a bus line. It's not a subway. The city has called it a bus rapid trans bus rapid transit and that it if that makes sense anyway, I don't know. Year to date, the average condo and single family sales price is $576,000 in Roxbury with a median price of $569,000. Mission Hill is a neighborhood that's about three quarters of a square mile and home to about 16,000 people. It's known for its back row houses and triple deckers and for out of towners, triple deckers are three families while being home to actually several hospitals as well as universities. Mission Hill overlaps with about half of Longwood Medical and Academic Care. All in all, Mission Hill is home to 21 healthcare research and educational institutions that has become the engine of economic housing and growth in this area. The Mission Hill Triangle is an arch architectural landmark with homes dating from 1872 to 1890. It's a beautiful neighborhood that reflects multiple architectural styles. Residents of Mission Hill, they utilize four stops that run along the green E-Line br e branch, as well as the one stop at Roxbury Crossing, which is on the orange line. Year to date, the average condo and single family sales price in Mission Hill is $646,000, with the median price being $613,000. The Fenway, I can promise you, is a lot more than the neighborhood with just near Fenway Park, right? It's most commonly referred to as Fenway, but technically it's Fenway slash Kenmore. Um, it's a neighborhood of about 41,000 people, and today Fenway is much more than a place just to hang out and grab a burger and a beer and a game. Fenway's seen a boom that has replaced many of the older landmarks, unfortunately, with condos and luxury rentals. But don't worry, <laughs> the sicko sign's still there. Fenway is also home to part of the Longwood Medical Area, as well as Boston University, which has been aggressively purchasing land throughout Fenway for the last 20 years. The neighborhood is served by eight stops on the Green Line, as well as the Yawkey uh, stop on the commuter rail. Year to date, the average condo in the Fenway is $637,000, while the median price is $599,000. Next, we're going to go to the South End. The South End is one of Boston's most beautiful neighborhoods with brick brownstone Victorians and the many parks in and around the area. The South End has the largest intact Victorian row house district in the country. And residents today love the walkability of the neighborhood, as well as the numerous playgrounds and parks. Not to mention, the close proximity to the Back Bay and Chinatown make the South End an amazing community to live in. 
The South End, though, it's gone through a lot over the years. It's gone through its booms and its busts and its history. But today, we can consider it as one of Boston's nicest and one of Boston's most diverse socially and economically neighborhoods. The South End is still home to a large gay community that has really been given a lot of credit to what ultimately turned this community around. Another community within the community, if you will, is the unofficial well, to Boston, Soa neighborhood. Soa means south of Washington Street. This is a neighborhood where many artists live and work, and their spirit is very prevalent there. There are no MBA, MBTA trains that run through the South End. However, the neighborhood is very close to subway stops and other neighborhoods where residents can just easily and quickly jump on the Green Line or Orange Line, as well as the commuter rail. Like all other neighborhoods in Boston, South End is also served by multiple bus lines. The year-to-date average condo and single-family sales price in the South End is $1.1 million, while the median price is $925,000. In Bay Village, well, this is Boston's actually smallest official neighborhood, with only about 1,400 people living there. If you're looking for a home here, oftentimes Bay Village homes for sale get lumped in with the back bay due to it being so small. Bay Village will have a familiar feeling to the homes on Beacon Hill as craftsmen that built those Beacon Hill homes settled in this area and built these homes for themselves. I have to say that other than housing, there isn't really a whole lot going on in Bay Village, and that's actually how most residents love it. Bay Village is within close walking distance to some of the best bars and restaurants that the city has to offer. Bay Village is more of a walking neighborhood than anything else as there are no MBTA stations that go through the neighborhood. The Green Line and Orange Line stations as well as the commuter rail are all within very close walking distance. And speaking of walking, Bay Village has a walking score of 98 and is ranked as the fourth most walkable neighborhood in Boston. And this says a lot as Boston is ranked the third most walkable city in the US. Did I mention that Bay Village sales are often lumped in with the back bag? Yeah, I did. So take these year-to-date sales with a grain of salt, if you will. The year-to-date average condo and single-family sales price in the Bay Village is $1.1 million, while the median price is $745,000. Downtown, well, it's true to its name. The downtown neighborhood is downtown. This is considered the central business district of Boston is mostly commercial space with some newer condo development in the recent years. Downtown is home to a lot of Boston's history as it's con uh, constituted much of the city proper before the dramatic expansion that brought us areas like, well, the Back Bay. It's currently home to about 18,000 residents, but that number has grown significantly over the last couple of years. Downtown, it offers it all, from bars, restaurants, theaters, to coffee shops and parks. This is actually one of the city's fastest growing neighborhoods with much more development to come. It's a large area that has quite a few neighborhoods within the official neighborhood. It is in the downtown where you'll find the famed Faneuil Hall or the City Hall. There are four subway lines that service the downtown neighborhood. Downtown Crossing Station has the orange and red line access. Park Street has the green and red line access. Government Center has green and blue line access, and State Station has the blue line and orange line access. Then there's also South Station, which services the commuter rail, as well as the red line, and then there's that silver line, which is really a bus line. Quite frankly, downtown has it all. Year to date, the average condo and sales price in the downtown neighborhood is $1.46 million, the median price being $1.15 million. Chinatown, the Leather District. The next neighborhood to the city of Boston is known as Chinatown, the Leather District. But in real life, these are two very different neighborhoods in one while both having very distinct personalities. Chinatown is home to about 5,000 residents. It is the last surviving historic ethnic Chinese enclave in New England. The 20th century has been a time of change for Chinatown though, as it's seen a significant loss of the neighborhood to Tufts Medical Center and the deconstruction of the central artery. To many, the big dig in the deconstruction of the central artery, quite frankly, well, they saved the city. Today in Chinatown, there is a worry about gentrification, which is a big worry throughout Boston. The, age po the Asian population has dropped to less than 50%, while many parts are becoming less cultural and more touristy. 
The leather district is a neighborhood that got its name due to their dominance in, well, the leather industry, who would have guessed? It's essentially a three street by three street neighborhood. Today, many of the buildings are still used by local companies for office space and storefronts with a lucky few that have claimed the top floors as lofted apartments. The Chinatown leather, leather district neighborhood is served by the orange line with two stops. Go be just beyond the neighborhood and that's where you're gonna find access to the green line and silver line as well as the commuter rail. Year to date, the average sales price in the Chinatown Leather District neighborhood is $891,000, with the median price being $866,000. Now we're gonna to head to the North End. The North End has the distinction as the city's oldest residential community, and it is only natural that the North End has gone through a lot of changes during that time. Today, the North End is known for its Italian population and Italian-themed restaurants. You'll see that very quickly remains true as you walk down Hanover Street. Um, you're gonna see a ton of Italian restaurants. Mike's Pastries, stop at Mike's Pastries. And by the way, have you ever heard of Prince Pasta? Yep, that's from the North End too. The North End was saved, if you will, by in the late 20th century and into the 21st. That central artery that we talked about earlier was really strangled the neighborhood with traffic. People could not get from the North End to downtown and vice versa. The North End was literally isolated and because of all this traffic, the central artery was demolished and the road was put underneath the city. This road, as we call it, is the Big Dig. The Big Dig and the removal of the central artery is quite frankly what the reason for the neighborhood's vibrance today. The proximity of the North End to downtown as well as the waterfront has made it a really big hot spot along for residents. You'll quickly notice that the people that call the North End home have a strong feeling of pride for the North End. This pride, I think, is most abundant during the summer festivals, most specifically the St. Anthony uh, Feast. There are no MBTA subway access in the neighborhood, but just a couple steps outside the neighborhood um, is access to the orange, green, and blue lines. Not to mention the commuter rail access at the North Station also helps service a lot of North End residents. Year to date, the average condo sale price in the North End is $687,000, with the median price being $637,000. Now, to the West End. For the final neighborhood in Boston, um, it's last, but it's not least. The West End is home, well, to the Boston Bruins as well as the Celtics. And this neighborhood has seen a lot of development in the last couple of years. Heck, the whole city, quite frankly, has seen a lot of development. But it's safe to say that this development really started in the 1950s with an urban renewal project. This project essentially raised the entire neighborhood and gave way to Mass General Hospital as well as Government Center. The North End and the West End used to look very similar. Today, the neighborhood is mixed-use commercial and residential. The central location and accessibility of downtown Boston is really what keeps making people call this home. The residential areas that have been rebuilt are primarily upscale high rises with condos and luxury rentals as the area around TD Bank Center has been completely transformed in the last couple of years. The neighborhood, well, it's served by the green and orange lines as well as the commuter rail at the North Station. The red and blue lines, lines have stops that are extremely close to the neighborhood as well. The year to date, the average condo and sales price in the West End is $576,000 with a median price of $555,000. So, Boston, it's a world-class city. In our community, there is a community for everybody. In other videos, we're going to do a deeper dive and talk about the different neighborhoods in the city of Boston, these official Boston neighborhoods. Yes, it's confusing, and that's why we're here to help. If you're relocating to Boston, not familiar with the area and the different neighborhoods, then I recommend you first analyze your wants and your needs and then your ability. Maybe you want a single family home with three bedrooms and are looking in a price range of up to $700,000. Well, if that's the case, then quite frankly, the back bay most likely won't be the right place for you. The neighborhoods in Boston really in a way pick us based on our needs as well as our abilities. If you have any questions or want to talk about your specific wants and needs, then you can always reach me at 617-480-2600 or shoot me an email at jeff at boston2. My name's Jeff Chubb and my team, the Chubb Homes team, are brokered by eXp Realty. And we look forward to hearing and helping you in any way we can.